Nathan, welcome back, brother. Hello, Jonathan. Thank you very much for having me back. Oh, this is uh, this is becoming a regular thing I could look forward to, having a chat with my own uh, jolly Viking. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, folks, today's episode is going to be a bit of a, a mesh. So normally, as I said at the very, very start of this, this podcasting journey, so to speak, was that the first week of the month was going to be um, a theme of something, some description. Um, and then week four is going to be like a job uh, or role themed one. So in my previous episode, so you want to be a, a paramedic with Sharon McFall. That was a good episode. So check that one out if you're interested or uh, with my good friend, Sam, on if you want to join the police. But uh, mm. doing a bit of a weird mesh today. Um, again, still in the experimentation phase of podcasting. Um, so... The theme today is to is, is the theme for me at least, uh, unless Nathan can come up with a better description, is encouraging creativity, not being afraid to uh, express yourself in whatever form that may take, um, and also discussing. So you want to be a podcaster? So it's a bit of a, a bit of a mix and mesh. Mm. Um, so we do have some big news to announce shortly, but first I'll uh, I'll just discuss my own podcasting journey um, in a relatively succinct manner um so far i'm really enjoying it so far it has come with some very unique challenges i think the biggest challenge for me is time management in the okay. you know full-time job and trying to yeah, yeah trying to uh well organize like i've got six months of content organized but then obviously mm. you've got to organize getting guests to appear yeah, on yeah. and you've got to organize mm. the content and then you've got to get it edited and stuff this is not to put anyone off it is a uh, I, I really, really enjoy it. Uh, there's not like a there's not like a moment where I say, "Oh crap, I have to podcast again." I do go, <laughs> "Crap, I'm maybe not as organized as I could be, and I have to podcast because if I don't, I'm it's not going to give enough time for." Yeah. Big shout out to our sound editor, Aaron McConnell. He, he, it's not going to be enough time for him to to get it edited properly and you know back to us. Um, mm. So it's more time pressure thing than a, a crap. I have to podcast. Mm. I've really enjoyed it. I've got some really good guests lined up uh, in the future here and some very interesting subjects as well. And uh, overall, um, I think my only advice so far, if you really want to start a podcast or or anything of that nature, would be to make sure you're going to have fun primarily because it yes. is it is a form of work. You know, there, don't don't think that you're gonna just turn up and podcasting is sit as easy as sitting in front of a mic. I can tell you the first time I sat in front of a mic, it is quite intimidating. You know, mm. you know, it's all very good being confident what you're gonna say in your head, and then you actually get to the mic and you're like, ah, crap, mind blank. Um, I don't know what the podcaster equivalent of writer's block is, but you know, when you when you get to you get to that point where you, you kind of have to speak and deliver the goods. It's like, ah, crap, I've forgotten how to speak. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've forgotten how to use words. Um, so do you not fun. think, though, that that's having guests and stuff, so you've actually got someone to talk to, does that, do you find that that helps? Oh, rather that's, than being a one man band? Yeah, it's a different league altogether for me. Like, some people really thrive with the solo podcasting thing, and I think fair play to you. Um, mm. <clears throat> some some uh, podcasts really, I don't really think, suit guests. You know, that's just the way they've set up their own podcast. Sure, yeah, but, yeah. But for me, I, I the whole point of this was to talk to people. Occasionally, I'll do a solo, very occasionally. Mm. But I know that there's a, I think, I don't want to say the majority, but there's a lot of podcasting that does um, solo guests, uh, does does uh, solos with the occasional guest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, it's, it's it's totally up to yourself what you want to do as your podcast at the end of the day. But oh yeah, I um I think the other thing I would say is do your research. Don't mm. like yes, be take messy action and jump in, but don't don't just buy a cheap mic and download Audacity and then like just rant nonsense. Quite frankly, um, <laughs> you need to provide value for listeners, which I think I'm doing. I'm starting to get yeah, some really yeah. good reviews. Mm. Um, but at the same time, consistency is another key thing as well. Yeah. Uh, you know, there there's a statistic that um, after two years, only uh, after two years, 96, 94% of podcasters stop because, wow. yeah, because they just, they, they realize crap, it's, it's hard work and they're not going to be Joe Rogan in a month. 
<laughs> um, yeah you know i'm not trying to make fun of people but you know a lot of people come in with a lot of misconceptions yeah, um, yeah, i spent yeah. i spent from probably the middle of october until december in fact you know, i'm still researching but my podcast launched in january and i spent three months researching sometimes mm. six hours a day Wow. Yeah. Something is just to, that, but that's everything from equipment to what you should be doing to make sure you're providing mm. value and stuff. I'm still learning and I'll, I'll always still, I'll always be learning with podcasting. Good. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, for me, the, the, I've really enjoyed it so far. Um, mm. And looking back I, at the minute, I'd say I wouldn't change anything. I haven't done yeah, yeah. anything where I thought, you know what, this, yeah. this, I should have really change tack or course as it's all just been a, a learning process so far but yeah. you know the people i've chatted to that i otherwise wouldn't have had a opportunity to uh, and the, and you know and, and a really good benefit as well is just having the benefit to chat with you each week because like we're really good friends as well it's just nice having a chat yeah, with yeah. a friend Thank on you. a weekly basis yeah. um you know our nonsense combi- our you. nonsense combined <laughs> will hopefully provide some form of of, of jovility and we're like uh, a laughter. like a low budget power ranger a hundred percent so um we'll continue talking about my podcast and um and if you want to become a podcaster and encouraging creativity uh, mm. as we go through the podcast but uh we have a big announcement to make so drum Do. roll drum roll I don't have sound effects. Use your imagination, folks. Um, but uh, Nathan is launching a podcast himself. So yes, uh, I will hand it over to you to to introduce. Uh, you'll 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 probably have seen the weird title of this podcast episode, so that'll give you a hint. Um, but yeah, Nathan, take it away. Tell us all about your up and coming podcast. So I think, um, well, firstly, I think this is coming off the back of um, some of the feedback that. I've seen you get, which is people asking when I'm going to do my own thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, and in fact, when when you asked, you put a little poll up asking about how you how your listeners wanted the our interaction structured, and and one wag who is a mutual friend of ours, says, <laughs> when, when when can we just have Nathan talking on his own? Um, which I also selected that option. Which is, <laughs> you know, he's rude, but but also totally in character with that friend of ours. Oh yes, um, and so that's fine. Um, and also some other friends of mine who, unrelated to this, and even without me bringing it up, have suggested that maybe I should have a go at pushing my voice out there onto the airwaves. Um, and and I think that where I'm at right now is is where you you said you were at last October, yeah. Um, where research and thoughts and and starting to sort of visualize what the um, what it would look like, what a po- what my podcast would look like. Because um, it's, I, I don't know about you, but initially, like the, the idea I found found was quite quite ethereal. It's kind of there's no substance to it. It's just this an idea of like, well, okay. I do like to communicate with people and I do like to um, learn. And I think, I think part of being like what you just, you were just saying now, I think part of being a podcaster isn't just you, um, you know, expelling air out into the great void, but it's also about receiving information back as well. It's a, it's a two way flow, isn't it? I think, you know, that listening to all of the, all of your podcasts so far where you've been interviewing people, and and the amount of times that I've heard you say, what you just said blew my mind. What you just said is wow, it's really opened my eyes to you. Know, and even if it's a subject that maybe that you uh, you were just bringing in to present to your listeners, it's kind of like because you're the interviewer, you're you're that you are also one of those listeners. Mm. Um, that, and that, so that think, blew my mind in a way. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And so I think like. And so, you know, when, when you first sort of start down this idea of, I think we, no matter what it is, when we're talking about creativity, um, when you first start out into anything creative, it's it's ethereal and you can't, um, and it, and as you start to pull on some of those those little strands, some of them fall away and disappear, but some of them stay and you start to sort of build something that's a bit more, it's got a bit more structure to it. 
Um, and so the, and I think actually it was, you know, not just what what I've heard on on um, on the Curious Ulsterman, but other um, podcasts and other sites and other things where they where they talk about these things, is that idea of finding something that you're passionate about, something that you are excited about, something that yeah, you know, but also something that you think other Gary, people will get on board with. Yeah, Gary, just two seconds. Yeah. There you go, folks. There's a, a lesson in real time for if you want to be a podcast host, sometimes just people barge in with hoovers. But yeah, all part of the learning process. Sorry, Nathan. Carry on with what you were saying. So as I was saying, when you're riding an elephant, it's really oh no, no, that was a different conversation. Um, so yeah, so when we when we when we when we're looking at this this idea of yeah, I was saying about being creative and how you start to, you know, the this initial idea that's often intangible and as it starts to form and um and it, and i don't think you know i think it's different things will trigger our creativity when it and, and also depending on where your you know where you, what your creativity is in as well um you know um whether it's musical or <clears throat> artistry or um cooking or baking or whatever it is um dancing i don't know um podcasting you know a, a poet might see a sunset um and a painter will see a sunset and they'll you know it's it's something that's intangible but both of them will respond with their own art um with their medium and so i think like you know, um, I was thinking about these things, and one of the things that um, I really enjoy, and, and sadly, when I when I looked on the internet, when I looked on various podcast providers, um, the, these particular things are, are very well represented already. Um, but I'm hoping I can bring my own um, flavor flavor to it. Yeah, my own. Uh, take on it and and also maybe just yeah a, a different just a different outlook on it as well and so what, what I'm going to be doing is um, well the, firstly the podcast is going to be entitled No Wet Fish <laughs> um, which is a obviously strange and curious title um, but my so where I'm living right now um, in, in the UK I don't know if it's the same anywhere else or whether it's just unique to Britain um, but a lot of properties have um, sometimes have strange rules connected to the title deeds of those properties. Um, and, and this, uh, yeah, this house has got a very strange rule on its title deed, which is that you're not, a, you're not allowed to sell wet fish from the front wall of the house. <laughs> As it, so not, not, not where the front door is, but the wall with, you know, so you've got the front garden and then the wall going onto the street. So that, that wall there, you're not allowed to sell wet fish from there. So no wet fish. Um, and, um, and that's just funny and weird. <laughs> and, and so I like that as an idea. And, but what I'm going to be talking about has got nothing to do with wet fish. So no wet fish. Um, what I'm going to be, looking at is um all different kinds of fermentation because fermentation is life um preach <laughs> and so that that's going to be from everything from home brewing beer um, which is a form of fermentation um th and these are all things that i've done as well or tried to do some with more success than others um so home brewing beer um, sourdough bread, because the sourdough is, is a form of fermentation. That's what happens there um, when you make the starter. Um, kombucha, which is an incredibly trendy hipster drink, um, which is fermentation. Um, some of the hot sauces that I've made in the past are made using fermentation. Um, and then also things like, um, it's not fermentation, but preserv preservatives or preservation, sorry. Um, which is like making things like hams, bacons, 
um, sausages. I'm not going to try and pronounce their names in the Spanish and Italian because I don't want to offend or upset anybody because we all know how English people say chorizo and it's wrong. And so I apologize. But, you know, the bright orangey red sausage that comes from Spain that tastes amazing, that one. Um, all of those things are, are cured and there's a form of fermentation happens to, to start off with the raw meat where you end up with a tasty ham or sausage or bacon or wherever it is, um, there's a process and, mm. and part of that process is, is curing or fermentation. Cheese is another one. Um, so I want to sort of explore and talk about those things. Um, I'm going to, I've got, you know, from you know, my dad who is um, very much involved in and, and up for those things because at, at the minute we're, uh, we're in the process of retrofitting a fridge um, so that it will happily sit at a regulated um, temperature of 16 degrees centigrade. Um, so not like a normal fridge at all. And, and where it has various mechanisms in it so that, or devices in it so it can be, um, so that the moisture level is maintained at a very precise amount as well um, to attempt to home cure um, some hams and That's things cool. like that. Yeah, and so I'll be getting him on to talk about things, and we'll chat about stuff with him, um, and um, and then just some friends of mine who I know do various forms of home brewing and things like that, just to um, talk. Because I think there's, there's something I, I said to you the other day that, like you know, um, and probably something you'll hear me repeat quite a lot when No Wet Fish is launched is that you know, we, we worry about things like the pH levels of water and, and the mineral content of this or that or the other. Whereas the first people who fermented something, it was, it was a happy accident. Hmm. And, hu <laughs> and, and humanity like is still alive. You know, we, you know the, the first people who accidentally fermented something didn't even know what happened, didn't even know why it had happened. And then they, you know, those people were they experimented again and, and was, were able to repeat the accident. Um, and humanity is still here to tell the tale, you know, so I don't think we need to worry too much about, you know, whether I've oh, got the right nutrient levels in the water. Yeah, I think, yeah, you, just, yeah, yeah. you know, go for it. But again, that's just me because I do have a slightly barbarian approach to things. But actually what I want to do is talk to people who are doing it at a home level. So they're not a factory, they're not a brewery, but actually are taking that finesse and, and I like taking that, that yeah. care because actually I want to learn as well. I, I actually want to get good at doing this stuff. Um, and so I want to have a look at like, you know, the, the hobby of, of brewing and of curing, but how to do it in a way that's good. Um, that, because, like, you know, and again, it's probably something that I will say a lot when the, when my podcast airs is that satisfaction of taking that, lump of bacon out of your fridge that you've cured and you you slice your own you know it, a supermarket hasn't decided how thick you're going to cut this bacon you've decided Oof, how thick you're gonna i like cut i like it. that concept you know and and you throw it in the frying pan and you hear it sizzle and you smell you know home cured bacon doesn't smell like supermarket bacon yeah um you know the last one i i did i i cured with um i used um molasses and chili um, so you've got this deep rich sort of sugary cover but with the you know that just that back end of fire on it um and you know and every slice just was was just a joy you know um so i want to i want to sort of go down that avenue i want to um hopefully take people on a journey of from being um i've just you know been someone who likes to open a can of beer to someone who's now filled their first keg of beer that yeah. they've made themselves and i want to sort of go on that or someone who likes to um you know sit down on a sunday evening with a um with a nice block of cheese some biscuits uh, and a bottle of red wine to one of those cheeses being one that they've done themselves you know because like it's yeah. it, I want I want to have that kind of idea of going on a journey and doing something that everyone loves, but you've got the satisfaction of knowing that you've done that bit yourself. 
Oh yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, so, having the having the actual fruits of your labor there mm. in front of you and to enjoy. Um, yeah. You said something early on which I wanted to bring to the audience's attention, in that you said that it's it's already well represented within mm-hmm. the podcasting thing. But I said I said this to you uh, in a phone call earlier in the week. Uh, or early, this is the start of the week when I'm recording this at the weekend. Um, <laughs> And uh, I basically, you you brought up this concern to me that basically, uh, I, as much as I want to chat about this, it, there's already enough people chatting about it. Mm. I said, fair point. However, an example that was given to me was the next time you go into a supermarket, look down the bread aisle and tell me how many variations there are of loaf bread. I mean, mm. like off the top of my head, I think I can count six or seven. And yeah, it's kind of yeah. like, everybody likes bread. Well, except the celiacs. Sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> but you know, um, you know, I, for example, I have a very particular bread. I like, I like brown and seeded, whereas my brothers scoff at it and go, "We're not fucking birds. <laughs> we don't eat seeds." <laughs> <laughs> you chuck seeds to birds. You don't put it in your bread. I was like, "Yeah, it's each their own, isn't it?" So. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so like for me, I have a very particular want and need for that type of bread, even though there mm-hmm. is like 20 other brands I could choose from. There's always going to be, you can always put out your own version of creativity, folks, and other people will find you more relatable than others. Absolutely, yeah. You know, so for example, for me, um, there, within this space, there is, I feel like, a few podcasters discussing, you know, uh, the the adult the, the adult problems you deal with especially as you're leaving school but i've noticed that a lot of them have just stopped podcasting so mm. my idea is just to be consistent and to you know eventually just win the game by you know staying around long enough uh yeah i don't have any particular talent endurance or testing endurance <laughs> testing exactly i don't have any particular talents i'm not joe rogan but heck if i'm here after my 200th episode or something you know i think i've done something right and you know if you do if you do have some creativity that you want to express but Mm. you know express it but we're going to talk in particular about podcasting and that is you know i think the most popular podcast at the minute is true crime and there's an i don't know there's another topic but essentially if you want to start a successful podcast and you can do it well true crime is like like seems to be the number one podcast uh, I'm assuming strange. that's investigating, not committing. Yes, yes, okay. yes. I'm just checking, yes. just checking. Yes, uh, oh, yeah. do, do not go and commit crimes in the name of the Curious Ulsterman and the Jolly Viking, please. <laughs> there's, there's, <laughs> there's people out there, there with it. We're, we're not advocating anarchy or like, <laughs> or, or violence or any form of rioting or crime in any description, please don't. Um, Shotgun yeah. and a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> you will listen to me. <laughs> Hand over the money. How do you feel? <laughs> give me a give me a positive review on Apple. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh crap. But yeah, it's um it, it's 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 something I think actually something that is worth um discussing, which mm-hmm. ties in nicely with the meme I mentioned to you earlier, but just haven't told oh. you what it is yet, because I know how much you like your memes. So oh. so the concept of good meme. yeah, the concept of um of liking something but being too ashamed to admit you like it so this i came home today i think the universe just aligned for us to make this episode because so many things have aligned for this particular topic today i was just like yeah we got to talk about it and um, i seen a a meme from my cousin on facebook and i just laughed because it's so true and they just and it just said quite plainly that being in your twenties is just is just falling in love again with the stuff when you were thirteen, but we're too ashamed to admit it. And it's <laughs> like, yeah, that's pretty true. Interesting story about that. So my first ever day of secondary school, right? Uh, to give you an idea of how long ago that was, folks, that was the darkness had just released, I believe, in a thing called Love. Yeah, cracking shit. That was my like. It came out like a week before my first day in secondary school. So Amazing. yeah, so I we turned up and obviously it's like 
everyone wants to fit in and it's like play the survival game don't stand out whatever you do and uh what was that i we all came around uh the teacher kit that sat us down and she said right we're just gonna play some icebreakers get to know because you're gonna you know be with these people for the next five years in your class so I, okay no worries so uh she said right okay what music do you all like and one person the very first person just picked like what was ever at the top of the charts about the darkness i believe in a thing called love and then the next thing the other 31 people in the class were like yeah i believe in a thing called love me not getting the game just went do you know what i think it's an all right song but i prefer this and everyone's just looking at me with a deaf stare like you broke from the norm <laughs> you're not supposed to express any form of difference in opinion or thought or creativity <laughs> Not at this stage. How dare you? How dare you have a different opinion yeah. from the group? Um, but strangely enough, a week later, um, the darkness were no. Uh, you know, once everybody had settled in, nobody liked the darkness really. It was all the. Do you remember Scooter and all? Like it was like that hamster music. Do you remember oh, yeah, like yeah, the high pitched yeah. like drum and bass type stuff? I was like that was a very quick switch from the darkness to, you know, mm. that. But each to their own. But yeah, mm-hmm. it, it 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 touches on the topic of you know we are so concerned with what people are going to think about us you know especially if you stick your head above the parapet like for me i definitely was quite anxious you know um sticking my head up and saying oh by the way i'm starting this podcasting because then you you're opening Mm. yourself up to ridicule and you're opening yourself up to criticism and nobody likes that but Mm. then at the same time i also thought well the people who matter are encouraging me in this and the people who don't may be the ones who mm. criticize and then do you really care mm. um yeah, yeah. With, with that if you have something you'd like to do creative creatively then just do it because you're going to get judged either way you're going to get judged yeah. for not doing it you're going to get judged for doing it so you might as well do something you enjoy um you know something i heard the other day i was listening to my good friend colt gordon's podcast the Colt Gordon podcast aptly named, but it's a mental health one. Um, mm. And I just did a 10 episode binge on his one. It's very, very good. And he said something. It's like, give yourself permission to feel, you know, don't, mm. you know, yeah. d- don't allow yourself to fall flat in your face and learn in the process and grow. Um, thankfully, I haven't fallen flat on my face yet with, with podcasting. I anticipate I will, but it's going to be part of the, the learning process. Mm. And you know, again, if you have an idea that you want to have a chat about or you want to, you have something interesting to say, my own advice is similar to what I said to Nathan. You know, there's there's 50 different variations of bread. Everyone has their particular favorite and you need to find the one you like and you can talk about and you can bring value to your audience. But mm. also realize that you're going to be um, that you're going to be more relatable than others. Mm. So for some reason, people will find me. If there's someone from Northern Ireland and Australia who just happens to listen to this, they're going to find put me probably more relatable than some random dude in America, perhaps, just purely from an accent point of view and perhaps ideas course, as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's an interesting one. Like how... How do you, in your own opinion, have you ever? I know you've mentored a lot of a lot of youth in your time. Mm. Like, if so, one of them came to you and said, "Look, I've 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 got this creative idea. I want to go dance. I want to start a podcast. I want to sing. I want to whatever, you know." But I'm too scared to do it because people will laugh at me or something. What would you say to them? Um. Well. I don't think it's interesting, isn't it? Because I think like a lot of that would come down to the relationship of me knowing that person. So I, I, I don't think I could give a, a hypothetical sort of answer because it, yeah, I think it's actually, it's kind of individual to each person. I think, you know, I think I, I would offer them my unyielding support um, and the fact that I would, I would cheer them on as long as they're not breaking the law or harming themselves, obviously. Of course, um, I would cheer them on in anything that they were doing. Um, you know, I think that. But if, if someone was wanting to explore um, a creative thing, I mean, what I would do is, I mean, you know, like um, 
I would I would try and help them join them in 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 research to find out about that about this subject about this topic or whatever it was um and i would and i would tell them just to just to try it and keep going because i think like i think what you were so you said there about about um falling you know falling flat on your face i think that i know it's a i'm not always a fan of like pithy one-liners but Hmm. some of some of them are pretty good and like you know one i like is it's it it's not about falling on your face it's about getting back up again yeah um and i think you know if you you know it's i think that a lot of the subjects that you've covered already in your podcast you know like like your man who spoke about filling out cvs and interviews and things mm-hmm. you know it it's not about the interview you just failed it's about the next interview you're going into yeah um you know and and I think it, you know it's not about you know it's, I think like what you were saying about podcasts. I think that, you know when when I was in my teens, which was a century ago now. <laughs> um, when I was in my teens, um, quite a lot of my friends had that you know were wanting to go on to become musicians. Were wanting to have you know, have a rock band and all that kind of thing. And that was the vibe then. And um, I, none of them did it. <laughs> but they've all still, you know, they've all still got that kind of, they've all still got an interest and some of them are still going. But, you know, the, the ones that that make it out there, the ones that get that record contract signed are, are people who push and, and keep going. A, a friend of mine went through, I think it was almost four years of being unpaid um, because he wanted to work on, not on super yachts, which is the world you're wanting to go into, but in racing yachts. Oh, yes, yes. And and so he spent almost four years kind of just volunteering with yacht crews um, because a lot of these racing yachts, they only have one person on them, but there's like a whole team behind that one person who's going around the world or whatever they're doing. And um, he just volunteered for people and did stuff. And now he's got his own company where he teaches people how to use yachts. Um, and also um, will maintain these, you know, he's learned everything. At, you know, we're not talking like the super yachts, but, you know, a racing yacht from, from the pointy end to the flat end and the pointy bit at the top. He knows everything about that yacht. And and so you know he, but he did four years of being unpaid, volunteering, and feeling like every month he was falling on his face. Um, but with you know, a lot of encouragement, not and not from me exclusively, but encouragement from friends, and family, and from you know being supported in going for this. And now he has his own business. Um, in all that in that field that's you know it's really cool and he, but it, it took him a long time to get there and i think you know it almost goes back to what we were chatting about last time which is you know if you were to see him now and go oh you know and you were wanting to get into the racing yachting industry you go yeah but you know look at uh, but you know look at what he's got well what he's got is five years with like you know a quid a quid a year to show for his efforts in terms of finance but like but he he now knows people who you know like if if some rich dude in london has decided he wants to buy a yacht but doesn't know how to operate it there'll be another guy who will go oh i know someone who can teach you because of in all that time he was talking to people and making connections so i think if you want to go into anything that's a little bit different that's not in the norm I think you've almost got to be prepared to um, to battle a little bit more, and and maybe to um, see lean years before you get to you know the, the big harvest, um, because it's about working for it, it's about grinding, um, and not everybody wants 
the grind. People just want the insta cheat to get to yeah. the end of level boss, you know. Um, when actually, like, what you need to do is, um, you know, work for it and earn it. You know, I, I'm not expecting that in two or three months' time when I launch this thing that, you know, by this time next year, I'll have 10,000 listeners avidly waiting on my every word. What I'm expecting is there'll be like three other people who are bumbling idiots like me going, yeah, he's vaguely funny. Is <laughs> is really probably in reality what's going to happen, but you just got to, you know, um, you got to keep on going, haven't you? And, and, and like what you're saying is take those fail moments to learn, but also take those good moments to learn as well. You know, I think what you're saying about after action review, if you have a really great session, still review it mm. because you because you need to see why you know what was it that was great. Um because you can capture some of that essence, can't you, and then use it again. Um and so I think yeah, it's about I think anything where you're sort of breaking from the the, the normal experience, you know, it, it requires a certain amount of being prepared to fail, um, but also being prepared to climb back up onto your feet and to, yeah. you know, keep going with that one one foot in front of the other. Um, so I think that, you know, that's how, if, if someone, you know, if I was mentoring a young person, they were wanting to go into something that was breaking away from the norm, I'd, I'd just encourage them just to, just to go for it, but to also make sure that they've got good friends who can cheer them on and encourage them and get them to swing their legs out of bed when they're feeling like they've had enough. I like that. Yeah, I like that. It's um, it's interesting because I feel like there's definitely a, there's definitely a culture of of not allowing people to think outside of the box because mm. like there's so much to learn from a creative journey i mean this again taps into what we discussed last week you know it's not necessarily getting the result you want it's what you learned in the process of of arriving mm. at that result you know you learn more about your character you know during the ups and downs and things uh, and then when you mm. get to the result it's more the icing on the cake the real victory was was what you learned in the process um but i feel like we definitely, it's not encouraged. I don't know what stage of life we go through to the point where we go from kids who just don't care to crap, what are people going to think about me? You know, if I even exhibit any form of, of difference of opinion. Or... It's, it's puberty, isn't it? That's when you well, start yeah. to change. <laughs> but you yeah, know, you, you... but like yeah. at the same time, I'm kind of like also, well, you know, regardless of you know what stage of life you're at, I wonder if there's another culture around the world that does encourage create individual creativity. So you're not all mm. like going into group think, you know, not everybody mm. like as much. I do like the darkness by the way. Uh, and and <laughs> I, 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 I think called love. I really enjoy that. But you know, I think it was a bit weird having a hundred percent of a class, you know, saying I like it. I like yeah, the yeah. darkness, you know, I, it's, oh, yeah. it's interesting that if I feel like, there, we definitely need to encourage creativity more, but staying with podcasting creativity, yeah, very good. my advice, I think, if you want to start, is do not use your phone. You'd be surprised how many people like think they can just pick up their phone and just like... Yeah. But this has everything, everything. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, like, to be fair, I have seen some, like Pat Flynn, I think, even has a method where he can interview people with his phone but it's like he's still got like a proper like headset and like lapel mics and stuff right don't okay. don't, don't use your phone microphone or your laptop microphone just don't invest in a respectable microphone and yeah uh, get a mic um audacity is good free software to start and um i would say make sure you research your topic uh but also something you said that i want to touch on said like uh, you know this time next year i'm expecting free listeners you'll think i'm vaguely funny which i think you're a very funny guy i think most people do but right two more listeners i'm, I'm a third of the way there there you go <laughs> uh, <laughs> and ask yourself honestly right if you were going to podcast about something would you podcast about it if there was no money in it 
and nobody listened, would you enjoy it that much? And then if the answer is yes, there you go. You've got your topic. You know, could you talk about it week in and week out, even if nobody listened? Um, you know, that's the kind of attitude you need to go in with. Mm. Um, hit the burst your bubble. Podcasting is not a get rich quick scheme. You will not be Joe Rogan in a month or two months. It's hard work as well. Um, mm. So, you know, don't be under some sort of illusion that this is some easy way to sit behind a microphone spout any general nonsense and people are going to listen. Uh, you do mm. have to be quite intentional with, with what you're putting out there. Mm. Um, another really valuable resource is a podcast from my good friend, Chad Robson called podcast freedom. And he, his whole podcast is literally about helping you start a podcast or if you already have a podcast about growing your audience. So I'd really recommend that out with uh, Podcast Freedom with Chad Robson. Yes. Um, I was very fortunate to be actually interviewed on his show. I think I was his second ever guest uh, and it was a fantastic conversation. I've learned a lot from that show as well, um, mm. especially in like how to participate with the audience and growing that relationship between hosts and the audience as well. Mm. And, you know, I suppose a question I want to ask you is as an aspiring soon to be podcaster um, mm. what do you think are going to be like the biggest obstacles you'll have to overcome or what are you even looking most forward to to top that one off yeah so I think challenges I'm going to face is is finding a a suitably quiet space for recording properly oh, that's yes. going to be difficult um, I think um, I think so. The, there's like there's practical things like that. There's you know finding a good space to record in, um, and making sure that the each episode is is as ready and you know well polished to go out on you know to be heard. But then I think then other things it's going to be is. Is having a good standard of, of guests to talk because I think for me personally, I think the my favorite type of podcast to listen to, and it, it's not even a specific um, topic or genre, is one that has at least two people in it. So there's a back and forth. Yeah. Um, quite often, um, sometimes I can feel like I'm listening to an audio book rather than a podcast. If it's just one person talking, yeah, and and I kind of I can drift off from what they're saying and not be as engaged, whereas when it's bouncing around between you know at least two people, I find it that's for me is much more engaging when I'm listening to a podcast. Um, and then also I think that I think it, and this is just speaking about me personally even though this is a topic I find really fascinating and I really enjoy and something I love doing all the various things that we're talking about, things I, I do as a hobby and, and enjoy, I think will be having that motivation to sit down and talk about it each week or each fortnight. Um, because I think that like, I know that I can get very easily distracted from something. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and this is going to sound really stupid because, uh, um, and this is just, I'm just talking about me is that I'm, I'm very, I'm, I will get very excited and passionate about something that someone else is doing and, and support them to the hilt. So like, you know, when you phone me up to tell me about what you, about the Curious Ulsterman podcast all the way back last year, and we were talking, I was, yes, you know, excited and brimming with passion for it and and um and would you know support you and and all that kind of stuff and and i would do that you know with, with any of my friends who contact me and i would yeah i'd do that i'll support you um but i don't always have that same motivation for myself yeah yeah i think that's, um, i think that's something that we all struggle with to a degree and so i think that like actually you know sort of saying right okay this is something bam i'm gonna you know push into this i'm going to do this i'm going to keep going um and i think like what you were saying about breaking you know getting through that seventh episode you know um and or even the first year of of doing 
of broadcasting um, a pod. I think that that's the, it, it will be doing that uh, because, I, you know, I, I, I would probably get really quickly discouraged if, say, like if I, if I booked someone to interview and all of a sudden they, they flake out on me at the last minute and be like, oh, what's the point? What's the point? No one cares. And I would, you know, and so I think the biggest challenge I face is, is Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> does that yeah. you know that's a that's a very like philosophical i think that's the biggest challenge we all face it we're, we're, we're our own worst enemy at times aren't yeah, we? yeah 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 oh yeah and the problem is is though that i i would be sat here feeling all depressed and wanting to throw the towel in right and then you might phone me up and go oh nathan i'm done with the curious also and i would say everything to you that I should be saying to myself whilst completely dismissing it for me. <laughs> do, do, do you know what I mean? So I'd, I'd, I'd talk you into a corner where you'd be like, yeah, all right, okay, I'll, I'll carry on. Whilst at the same time going, you know, sticking two fingers up at my own, <laughs> at, at my own self, you know, it's, it's a really, I, you know, and so, I mean, I, I've said it a few times in here, haven't I? You know, like when we were talking about not making New Year's resolutions, but, you know, determining to do something. And I'm going, I've started telling people to do this whilst doing the opposite. Yeah. And feeling, you know, and going right. Okay, I need to be. I need to put my hand up here and own this. Um, and so I think that's something that my biggest challenge. I think is going to be me. Yeah. Um, but then, what am I looking forward to? What I'm looking forward to actually is is, you know, again because of COVID and things like that, and not being able to hang out with these people as much as I would have liked to. Actually, contacting these people and then arranging to have a sit down and chat with them about beer or <laughs> or about kombucha or about cheese or about ham or bacon um and just sit down and have a chat like we're having now um with that person to sort of you know but not just talk about like why we like bacon butties but the <laughs> process of of making a bacon uh you know of making it um and do and so that i learned but also that, so, you know, if someone's out there going, oh, you know, how, how do you make cultured butter? Um, you know, and yeah, exactly, you know, it, and that's butter that wears a monocle and goes to the theatre, you know, cultured <laughs> butter. <yeah. laughs> um, and, and so sit down and talk about that um, with, the, with the intention of learning, but also passing on some learning. I think I'm really looking forward to that. Um, and I think, I think along the way, I'm going to, incorporate a few different things and I, you know i've got a few ideas to get away but for the most part it's going to be looking at um fermentation and curing how we make something and preserve it so it lasts longer so that we're not dependent on what the supermarket pushes out but so that we can but also that those things that we like are actually healthier because we know what we've put in it we've controlled yeah. what's put into it you know yeah um and also being being prepared for the fact that like you know that the first time you try something that you've made like in that kind of aspect because it's not kind it's not the same as baking a cake but you know you've done that it will taste different to what you're used to oh yeah um and and it's being prepared for that but also like you know that there is that kind of i don't know like there was a <laughs> There's a batch of beer that me and my dad brewed not so long ago. And, and when we when you do it home brew, a lot of the time it ends up live in the bottle. So it's still got a bit of yeast in the bottle. Yes, uh, yes. Which you don't tend to get from store-bought beers, which kind of means you've got to like put the bottle in the sink and then pop the cap off it and then close one eye and it slightly fountains up. Or, <laughs> as happened to me, Two thirds of the bottle just comes up out, <laughs> and you're like, "I'm gonna have to go and get another one because that's just gone down the sink." You know, you just don't know what you're gonna get. It's an adventure, just opening, just opening it. But that satisfaction of I made this, um, yeah. and I want to, I want to, I want to talk to people about that. That's what I'm looking forward to is is listening to people, you know, stuff that they've done and it's worked, um, and also like the the. For me, the bigger part of it, the satisfaction again, which will be something I'll cover a lot, is that it's actually really satisfying sharing it with someone else as well. Yeah. Um, you know, when when you've brewed beer and you you've ended, you know, you've you got to the end of the process and you've got twenty five liters of beer, that sounds great, but that's still that's a lot to consume on your own. So sharing it with other people actually is quite nice. 
Um, you know, and so, yeah, and, and if you can get to a place where you kind of, I don't know, sell in 20 of those 25 liters. Oof, yeah, I've never done, I, I mean, I've never done that, but um, I've got a few friends who have done. And so I, I'm, my plan is to talk to them and about, you know, how did they get to that? So I'm looking forward to that as well, because I might even learn some business tips as well, you there know. You so I'm, I'm just really looking forward to chatting with people who I know and getting them because they, some of these people are really creative and really brilliant in their own right. And, and I just want to steal some of that brilliance, if I'm honest, <laughs> you know? So, yeah, I want to sit and listen and have some fun. Yeah. In, in a way, in my own, I mean, you, in, way, in the way you say you steal some brilliance in my own selfish way, I, I like this podcast because, um, Yes, I get the joy of sharing this information with loads of people who really need it. But yeah. at the same time, I'm just naturally getting loads of stuff. It's kind of like, you know, yeah. uh, you know, I'm getting someone who comes on and chats about mental health. Great. You know, I mean, like you have to normally pay a therapist for that. Um, <laughs> someone comes on and discusses what life is like as a paramedic. Normally you have to sit in the back of an ambulance to, to get that sort <laughs> of idea. Um, you know, you want to, you want to, you know, pick your thing. And I'm just getting all this information for free. Yeah, and yeah, like, yeah. I'm not saying, I'm, I'm not saying that in a, you know, uh, I'm, I'm under undermining people or something, but it's more, uh, these people are coming on out of the goodness of their own heart coming on and sharing their life experience. And then yeah, I get yeah, to share yeah. it with others, but yeah. just as a byproduct, I just get loads of yeah, weird yeah. And wonderful conversations. Yeah. Um, you said actually that you get some business tips as well. And this whole time I've been thinking perhaps maybe I should do a podcast tip of the week or something for aspiring podcasters. I don't know, but podcast I'll give a podcast tip of the week. <laughs> yes. I was, I, that was, we're, we're in the same way of life because I was thinking that as well. Um, yeah, I suppose actually a well podcast tip of the week would probably be go to Fiverr, F I V. E R R, I think it is. I think it's it's either right. two R's or two fa- or two V's, but essentially it's those of independent creators who will design your podcast artwork or your theme tune. So okay, yeah, I I my theme tune I was lucky enough I got made by our own sound editor Aaron McConnell, the legend I've that got, he is. I've got I've got an idea for what I want the theme tune to sound like, but um, I'm not going to air it just yet. <laughs> one else, I'll sound horrible, and two I. I need to contact a friend of mine and see if he, if he will consent to do it for me. <laughs> <laughs> Fair so. enough. Yeah. The um, but I think we'll we'll begin to wrap up. I don't know how long we've been recording for. I mean, like it's probably nearly been an hour. With with uh, a whole species has gone extinct since we started. So oh, well, that's not surprising <laughs> in 2021. Uh, <laughs> um, we we have actually been chatting for some time because unknown to you folks, we actually have started recording our pre-podcast conversation like blippers or something i don't know what you would call them um uh, but yeah they'll be exclusive to patreon so yeah if you want to donate a pound or a fiver or maybe even head for more yeah just, donate uh, a quid to listen to more of me what yeah a <laughs> yeah exactly yeah you get to hear our little catch-ups at the start and yeah what random random nonsense we chat before we come on here and pretend to be professional um or I, I don't even think we no, we're not even professional, are we? We're to, totally, totally we're like pretending. This. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, folks. That's everything for this cool. week. Um, I whatever there's your call to action. Whatever creative venture you are mm. considering, just go and do it. Ignore the naysayers. If you're yeah. um thinking about starting a podcast, do uh, get in contact on social media. I can give you what advice I can. Mm. Uh, check out Chad Robson's podcast at Podcast Freedom and uh yeah that's everything from me from this week so once again folks thank you so much for tuning yeah. in as always it's been a pleasure nathan once again thanks very much thank for uh, yeah. coming on look forward to hearing no wet fishes uh, no date. Wet fish. yeah you know? but uh, thank you for inspiring me and encouraging me as well i really yeah. appreciate that yeah right back at you right <laughs> so folks you have a great weekend and i wish you all the best bye for now Toodaloo.